Hola. Hi. Today we have more cognates. Yes. I did it did you on noun cognates, but today we are looking at adjectives and there's a group of adverb cognates as well. If you remember, cognates are those words that they kind of sound and look alike in English and in Portuguese. Say, for instance, dentist, dentista, possible, possível. You see, you can see that is the same word and they normally share the same meaning. And so the only thing we really need to do is a few tweakings in pronunciation and spelling so we can get it right. If you master these tweakings, if you get used to cognates, to think in terms of cognates and very aware that they exist, then it, this is really a good tool to boost your vocabulary very quickly. Shall we start? Yeah, let's do that. Vamos fazer isso já. This is our first group in English. The suffix, the ending is IST, and in Portuguese we add an A. Ista. So from pianist, we go to pianista. Dentist, we go to dentista. We have a lot of uh, professions, not only, but a lot of professions uh, will fit into this group. Uh, altruist, altruista. These, of course, can be used as adjectives and as nouns as well. When it comes to pronunciation, don't forget that here we are stressing the next last syllable. So, pianista, dentista, um, alpinista. Second group, we have uh, the suffix, the English suffix ENT, and then we add the E in Portuguese, so ent. So insufficient, insuficiente, permanent, permanente, competent, competent. The same thing here with the word stress, we are stressing the next last syllable, insuficiente, permanente, competente. And don't forget that these words ending uh, with the E, this vowel will be mute uh, or almost mute. There's still a, s a vowel sound, competent, uh, uh, but this is the sound, uh, uh, independent. Okay, moving on, we have the suffix uh, BLE and VEL in Portuguese. So, possible, possível, visible, visível reversible, reversible. You see, now the word stress here is quite ob obvious because we have the accent mark and whenever you see an accent mark in Portuguese, you know that that accent mark is marking the stress. And by the way, we need an accent mark here because otherwise we would need to stress the last syllable because words ending uh, with letter L get that last syllable stressed. So without accent mark, I would pronounce this possível, visível, reversível, <laughs> convertível, but with the accent mark, it makes it possível, visível, etc. And the L, it's also this more thick L. O, possível, visível, reversível. <laughs> okay, moving on to our uh, group number four, uh, we're still uh, looking at adjectives. As I said, just one group of adverbs, the last one. So uh, here we have the AR on both sides, so the ending AR. So molecular, molecular, curricular, curricular, rectangular, rectangular. Sorry, we don't actually rectangular. No, we don't, we don't pronounce the C, rectangular. Uh, popular, popular. So word stress, can you hear it? We stress the last syllable because as, as it was with the L at the end, it, it is the same thing with R at the end. So words, words with R at the end get that last syllable stressed. So therefore, molecular, curricular. Moving on, we have this IC, uh, ICO or ICA, depending, uh, uh, depending on if it is masculine or feminine. So uh, magnetic, 
magnético, magnética, electric, elétrico, elétrica, problematic, problemático, problemática, and so on and so forth. So notice that here we have the stress where the accent mark is, and the accent mark is on the third to last syllable, because otherwise, by default, we would stress the next to last syllable, as in magnetico, or elétrico, or problematico, but we don't want to say it, 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 it should sound as in magnetico, so that, therefore we have to have that uh, accent mark there. And by the way, uh, so I'm marking gender here, and in the previous uh, groups I didn't do that, because you know, these adjectives ending in a consonant, for instance, uh, th this is the same case, uh, and this ends with the vowel E. So all these um, uh, ending with E or with consonants, they have the same form for masculine and feminine. But um, in this case, so it will end in, in O uh, if it is masculine or A if it is feminine. Let's see group number six, um, IV in English and uh, IVO or A, depending on if it is masculine or feminine. So competitive, competitivo, competitiva, aggressive, agressivo, aggressiva, expressive, expressivo, expressiva. And here we go with the next to last uh, uh, syllable. Uh, it's the one that is stressed here by default, competitivo, agressivo, creativo. Group number seven, so O-U-S in English and uh, O-S-O or A in Portuguese. So religious becomes religioso, o, o, o. Uh, contagious, contagioso, contagiosa. Vigorous, vigoroso, vigorosa. Can you notice something happening here? Hmm? Maybe, maybe not. Right. Uh, so, you know, some words, the, 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 this O will change the vowel sound depending on if it is the masculine form or if it is the feminine form. And normally, if it is the feminine, if we go with the A at the end, the O sound will open up. So, listen. Religioso, religioso, religiosa. So from O to A. Vigoroso, vigorosa. Sinuoso, sinuosa. Do you see? Tricks, tricks. All right, last group, uh, number eight. Here we have the adverbs. And these are those ending in ly in English and ment in Portuguese. So regularly, regularmente, particularly, particularmente, originally, originalmente, and so on and so forth. So we have the suffix ment, and the stress is the default uh, next to last syllable. Finalmente, again, don't forget that e at the end of words it will sound quite mute. So, normalmente. Thumbs up if you liked the video and até a próxima. Tchau!